Thank you. I'm Giuseppe Scionti. I'm CEO and founder at Novamit. I'm a former professor in bioengineering and tissue engineering. So what we do at Novamit is we develop plant-based plant -based, microstrudid fibrous meat. So it's not ground meat, but it's fibrous meat instead. So as he said, we try to get the whole muscle. And we do that because everybody knows here, we have seen a lot of this, but I'm always surprised when I see we are not only double digits in annual growth rate, but UBS says with almost double of online food delivery in the next 10 years, and almost double of farming 4.0. So what we do is we try to use tissue engineering strategies, so cell-based meat strategies, but to create a plant-based meat substitute. And uh, we do that because we think there is advantages in both strategies, right? We want to get to the, uh, to the authenticity of cell-based meat, but we want to get the time and cost efficiency of plant-based meat. So we apply these tissue engineering strategies, and we want to get to the taste that, for example, Beyond or Impossible have very, uh, very well achieved. And we want to use the same ingredients they use, but transform that into something with the texture of fibrous meat, like a uh, whole muscle. So uh, we try to, up, to use this tissue engineering strategy so that we can get also the appearance at the three-dimensional level and also at the micro structure internal to this muscle. And uh, these words I borrow from uh, the director of science and technology at uh, Good Food Institute, David Welch, thank you, because uh, he explains and uh, we agree that uh, low moisture and high moisture extrusion works well for some application, but there is a need for alternatives especially if you want to create something that is not soy extrusion or wheat gluten extrusion. Huh? If you want to create pea extrusion and mix some proteins, uh, you need to have an alternative uh, technology. And our technology allows plant-based meat manufacturers, so we give that, them this technology to create different textures and use a variety of ingredients. So what we do is in tissue engineering, when I was professor, I was studying the histology of the tissues, and we study the cells, how they interact in their matrix, and uh, we, create to, we create models, how to uh, imitate these structures, and then we create three-dimensional structures, so you have the microstructure internal and the macrostructure, and we create these models to get to the appearance, the taste and the texture at the same time. We have an international patent. We just applied for the PCT application, so the international um, process. Of, um, what we patent is the focal composition, the plant-based composition, the microextrusion process. Our technology is not about 3D printing. Our, our technology is about microextrusion, right? This means that it can be scalable. Uh, it, it means it can be scaled up without the need of a 3D printer. So uh, we patented the process and the composition. This is our team, and I announce now, I see that uh, TechCrunch is now on the homepage in techcrunch.com. Jonathan Schieber has just published that we raised the seed round with New Crop Capital, so it's published right now, and it's on the homepage of TechCrunch. And they are our new partners. Then is our strategic advisors. We have a very strong IP and legal advisor, and we have a team that is growing. Now we have food engineer and manager of strategy and operations, Kristen and Joan. So we have been very lucky because, uh, because we do it with a printer. We have been uh, uh, the first movers there, and we have been on many different uh, newspapers. I was selected as one as the nine innovators to watch in 2019 by Smithsonian Institute. And uh, given uh, TED conferences, I've been talking in the European Parliament and the UN meetings, because the people not only want to create whole muscle, they want to have customizable products. If you want to have plant-based meat, it needs to be customizable, and to customize it, you need to know um, how to create this using tissue engineering, and who best uh, than tissue engineers are able to create tissues like muscle. All right, so we are now talking to space agencies also, and always every day with the Good Food Institute, uh, with the Michelin star restaurants, and even with the FAO to try to get different projects, even humanitarian purposes. And now, to end, I will show you just a video during the Q&A, and I'm happy afterwards if you want to contact me and know about the business model, how we apply this technology and give this technology to plant-based meat manufacturers, how we can apply this technology to cell-based meat, so provide the scaffolding technology so that they can see the cells on top and have a three-dimensional structure, and about the next investment round. So you can contact me, there is my mail here, and now, 
Very good. Our Christopher questions. Giuseppe. And uh, we're going to run this while we talk. This will give us some illustration of the process right. and the product, right? That's correct. While we're talking, you're very process and technology forward in what you're doing. Tell me about how microextrusion and 3D printing relate in your vision. Right. So 3D printing is my way, and we started there because I was using bio printing strategies. As you see here, I was doing tissues in the lab for human applications, so to create right. organs and tissues for human applications, and I thought, why can't I use this for, uh, to create meat mm -hmm. instead? So I do that with a 3D printer because it's easy. I, I can customize and prepare different textures and different uh, variety of ingredients. And then when we want to scale up, uh, I thought that 3D printing was the, the great way to demonstrate that our, my microextrusion technology I developed some years ago now, a couple of years ago now, can be scaled up with all their machines. Okay, so the microextrusion, what are we seeing here? This is 3D printing. Right, this okay. is our 3D printer. And how will microextrusion differ from that if we were to see it happening? Is right. it a, it's a different apparatus? Yes. No, uh, the, what we use now is this, as you explained uh, mm -hmm. uh, very well, and then now uh, the microextrusion at the large scale will be, I cannot disclose uh, very much about this technology because the patent will be not public yet, All right. right? But what happens is uh, we try to adapt the technology so that the infrastructures that plant-based meat and meat manufacturers already use, we want to adapt that so that we can use the same infrastructure and help them in this transition to create whole pieces of uh, plant-based meat. All right, and uh, what are we seeing there? What kind of a <laughs> cut is that? Right, what, what they see is Barcelona. What we see here is um, the machine. Uh, but uh, oh, yeah. what we're seeing is we try to... That's called a seagull. <laughs> That's called the seagull cut. Yes. And Barcelona is very nice if you want to visit. No. Yes, lovely. Our place. laboratories. What, we, what we're seeing there is that uh, we order these microfibers in the same way as uh, the muscular tissue is built. Mm -hmm. Not exactly the same way. We try to create a simplified model. We create a hierarchical and anisotropic structure so that these microfilaments create similar, similarly to uh, fibrous, uh, um, uh, the muscular fibers. Yes. Inside of them, there is actin and myosin. So we order the plant-based nanoproteins in the same direction as we want to create the texture and use the same ingredients that normally high moisture and low moisture extruders cannot use. So for example, imagine to put a beyond uh, uh, paste, beyond meat paste that you want to transform into a, a piece of steak. You can't do that with the, the, the actual technology now because right. it's, uh, it's harsh, it's high temperature, it's high pressure, it's uh, depending on the, the technology, it's high or low moisture, but we think we can, uh, we can do it. Very good, let's hear it for Giuseppe Shanti, please, from Nova Meat. Thank you. Thank you, Giuseppe, very good.